بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على كل أمور الدنيا والدين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وتتعلم وتعني وتذكر وتذكير والنفع والنفع والرفادة والاستفادة والحث على تمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء للهدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وفرده وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم نزك العلم لدني والمشرب السوف الهني وهب يا غني اللهم نزك العلم لدني والمشرب السوف الهني وهب يا غني اللهم نزك العلم لدني والمشرب السوف الهني وهب يا غني صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين آمين الحمد لله from the book من هج العابدين إن جل رب العالمين للإمام المجدد الحجة الإسلام والمسلمين زين الدين أبي حامد محمد بن محمد بن محمد بن أحمد الغزالي الطوسي الطبراني الشافعي رضي الله عنه ونفعنا الله به وبعلم الدارين لأن قال I from the book the path of the worshipful servant to the garden of the uh, of the Lord of the Worlds by the great Imam the proof of this religion beauty of uh, of the Muslims in this religion the father of Hamid Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Ahmad Al Ghazali uh, may Allah benefit us by him and by his knowledge is what he has said right, last week we were mentioning about different types of permissible uh, things uh, about permissibilities because previously we spoke about uh, about shubuhat right, so things that are uh, doubtful right, so on the side of uh, on, on you know where, where things can be clearly said halal, halal or haram right, so there are people who say because it can be clearly said that it is halal therefore I will not consume it and whereby those who with the same methods will say whereby I can clearly say that it is haram I can clearly say that it is haram therefore I will consume it right? so that's, what, that's what, basically the summary of the entire section right? so on which uh, end of the spectrum you like Right, so, you, so no one can say it's clearly halal or clearly haram, right? but everyone in, in their own situation, uh, you take note. Lah. I mean, you, you, see, you see what you feel more settled on, right? and, more, and not on the side of warak, that you only consume what is clearly halal. Right? But on the side of uh, the minimum that this religion speaks about, right? that if something is not clearly haram, it can be said to be haram. Right. So not and, and, and to understand that when you say something is not haram, it does not mean that it is halal. You get it, right? So this is this is a bit of one thing. Eh? So this is something is not haram does not mean that it is halal. Like right? it's just not haram. Like it's not it's not, it's not it's not proven that it is haram, but it's also not proven that it is halal. Uh, it's just neither. <laughs> it's just a great. It's, it's called a great area. Right, and of course, Rasulullah already uh, in himself advised us about it to stay away from the mutashabihat, right, from the gay area. And the one who does so has protected his religion and his honor. So now we go into um, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad. Right, we go into the types of things that are clearly halal. Uh, they're clearly halal, right, but uh, you can consume right, a lot of it. Uh, so is there a uh, blameworthy and um, a blameworthy amount of consumption of what is clearly halal right so the f- and he says well this this matter that it, it breaks down into three sections and that's the beautiful thing about imam al ghazali's works right is that he always com- compartmentalizes things right he always compartmentalizes everything right into sections so it's easy for us to memorize right to, and and when you can memorize then when you look at something you can ask yourself okay which of the three it falls into and throughout his book, actually when I was reading this book, when I was in Tarim, I, I actually was thinking, you know, it should actually be, should be drawn out, you know, like a, like a mind map, right? So you have, look at this, this issue. Okay, these are the three solutions. Okay, these are three solutions. Right, this issue. Three possibilities. Okay, these three possibilities. And he kind of like keeps to more or less three. And sometimes he goes into ten, right? Ten types. Right? But you see how he actually groups things up. And from grouping things up, it makes it easier to tackle each one of them. Right, rather than having everything all over the place, right? So this is a methodology, like, you know, in, 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 in life, to know how to seek it, to know how to analyze things, and then from there derive the ruling right, of it. 
So he says that there are three groups for this. The first group, right, where he says here, uh, the, so the first group is that they use this, uh, this permissible thing to show off. Right? So it's clearly permissible, right, but they're showing off by it. And we mentioned like if somebody, for example, uh, buys a car, cash with his own money, and he buys a whole lot of cars, right, and, and all of this is to show off, then he says this brings a person to because showing off and, and arrogance will bring a person as mentioned in the hadith and in the in the Quran that it brings a person to destruction and into punishment. Right, so where he quoted in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajim anna mal hayatu dunya la'ibu wa lahu wa zinatu wa tafakhur and the end of the ayat says وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ right? And for surely this, the, the life of this world is nothing but play and folly. Right? Lahun. Right? Lahui is just basically just emptiness, right? empty talk, vanity. Right? Zinatun is vanity to beautification. Tafakhur, right? which is basically uh, to, to show off and to boast from each other. And the ayat ends off by, and uh, in the akhirah for them is a painful or severe punishment. And then in the hadith where Rasulullah says, "Man talab al dunya halalan mubah halalan mubahiyan mukathiran mufakhiran muraiyan laqi Allah Taala wa huwa alayhi ghadban." Right, so whosoever seeks of this dunya that is halal, and the hadith specifically says it's halal, right? But in excessive, and in excessive why to show off, right? To be seen. Right, then they will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is angry with them. Right, so the, the, the warning here is no longer on the thing itself, right, but on why is this thing sought. Right, and that is the line that makes it uh, permissible or destructive, right, why it was sought in the first place. Right, so and then here we have right, and, and just another commentary on the first part. Uh, from the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that even when it comes to not even uh, not even just this is not just touch on permissible things it can also touch into uh, acts of obedience right? whereby in a hadith uh, there, is, there is known is a well known hadith that the first people who will enter into the hellfire right, will be uh, the martyr right, who fought for himself it says they fought in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes right, but he fought for people to say that you are proud and other people to say that, oh how, how courageous how brave how strong and right, that was the one reason why he, why he fought in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a clear it's a clear um, act of obedience like on the outward but on the inward it was what caused him to be of the first to return to the hellfire and then the second one uh, is the one who uh, who spends his wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he spent to be praised and to be co- to be called, you know, how generous, how this, how that. And on the day of judgment, he will be of those who will be found in the hellfire because not doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third is the one who recites the Quran uh, or seeks knowledge uh, uh, for people to say, oh, how beautiful a voice, you know, how wonderful his recitation. And he does it for that reason. Yeah, and they will also be uh, of those who will be flung to the hellfire right, uh, because of them doing it for the self. So there is a self-worship that is involved. So it's not just on what is you know, merely permissible, even what is on the side of obedience. Right? Even that um, can cause a person to, uh, to go fall into destruction when you're doing it for the sake of other people watching you. So even obedience, yeah? so even Quran, when a person learns Quran, and if they do it uh, to show off, to tell people about it, then that is, uh, there's a severe warning over there. Right? Not to use the religion to show off to other people and to want to have praises from other people. The second, the second section, وَلَقِسْمُ ثَانِيُ أَنْ يَأْخُذَ الْحَلَالَ لِشَهَوَةِ نَفْسِهِ لَا غَيْرُ فَذَلِكَ مِنْهُ شَرٌ Yes, uh, yes, tawjibu alayhi al habsa wal hibasa wal habsa wal hisaba al yakawli ta'ala thumma la tus alunna yawma idin anin naim. Right, so the second type is basically he takes all this halal not because he's trying to show off or whatsoever, but it's more for his own desires. So the same, we're going to go with the same person with the, with the cast. So the first time round, he, he got all these cast to show off to everyone. 
right the second time now he got all these cars because he has a he has a disease with cars right and he loves cars uh, collecting cars they call this item it is more of their own uh problem their own issue right so it's not so much that if anyone sees him in the car but it's just that he likes all these cars right even if no one sees him it doesn't matter to him to, to him and right? he just likes seeing it the right? same thing like if, if someone like something something permissible like, like for example clothing Right, so some people they buy all kinds of clothing, right? For them, for people to praise their clothing, it's halal, right? But then you're looking for to, to boast to show off, right? But some people they just buy it because they like it, right? And that also is a is is a, there is a blame over there, right? To buy it just because you know your shahawa says buy that and buy that and buy that and buy that and buy that, right? It's just more of like just what is just showing off to the self, <laughs> right? Like pampering the self, like in a way. Now, the pampering of the self. Uh, so that is also uh, a form of, um, it's, it's, a, it's a blame there, pampering the self. Right? So going into excessiveness. Because, you know, we are here in this world for a short while. Those who actually understand the why Imam Ghazali is pointing us to, this world is very short. That's all. It's, it's very short. We don't have time to go around pampering ourselves. We don't have time to go around magnifying ourselves we don't have time to go around you know and beautifying ourselves and whatsoever it's so short right just just do what what you need to do in this dunya and then you're out of this dunya that's it right you need to be able to envision you know how really uh you know how 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 how, how short our life is on this on this earth and so so that's why and, and this is from the and, and they will be uh uh you will be made compulsory on them Right, it will be yustawujib, yustawujibu alayhi al-habsa wal-hisaba. Right, uh, it will be made compulsory on them uh, that they will be held, right, habs, right, they will be held behind on their judgment and hisab questioning. Right, so and this is Allah subhanahu wa taala says in the Quran, thumma la tusalunna yawma idna anin naim. Right, and then on that day they will be questioned on that day about the about the blessings they have been given. وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا حلال الدنيا حلالها حساب وحرامها عقاب على الدنيا is halal is to be questioned and it's haram is to be punished and and basically there's nothing no and and then another hadith was some says the dunya mal'una this this life of this world it is cursed and it's cursed all that's in it except I the one who remembers dhikr Right, and the one who studies and the one who teaches. Right, so the hadith goes that this dunya is cursed. And cursed is all that's in it. Except for the one who remembers. That means dhikr. Except for dhikrullah. Remembers, remembers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one who teaches and the one who studies. And these are the only things that will, that, that, that will save you from this dunya. That is number uh, two. Right, so number two is thinking of the thinking excessive of the, of the halal. And from there, we ask ourselves, uh, you know, when we take all these things, ask ourselves, will we, will we be prepared to answer the question on the day of judgment, you know, all of these <laughs> things that's in our pockets. Lah. So that's why they say, then people say, you know, then, then you can't even own anything. Well, it's really a matter of uh, level, well, which level you're at. Because there are Sahaba who don't own anything. Because they, reach, they actually reach that, that level whereby they can't, even, they, don't, they can't even bring themselves to own anything. Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, uh, the Prophet, Nabi Isa alayhi salam, uh, he was known for his zuhud, right, whereby uh, he, he used, like, to the point where he used to own a comb, and then he saw someone once uh, use his hands to just run his fingers through the hair, and then he said, I don't need a comb now, <laughs> right, so he, he gave away his comb, right, and then uh, he used to have a cup also, right? and then he saw someone use his hands to drink from the river, and he says, I never need a cup now. <laughs> I can give it away also. <laughs> and he says, in a sense, you want to say about the, the limit to it, it's really on what you're able to take right, of yourself. Right, so for us, steps, lah, steps. So count number of clothing that we have, number of shoes, number of bags, number of this, number of that, right, and then limit it. Right, so just keep put, put, a, put a, uh, you know, a limit on yourself. Okay, how many clothing for the, for the house? Right, it means home, home clothes. Uh, how many clothing for going out? How many clothing for nice events? You know, like my list. Uh, that's basically I mean, may, how, how many clothing for like if you're doing sports or whatsoever. Uh, so if you're thinking of the types of clothing <laughs> right, that you might have, then you put like you know an, an amount, maybe two or three pieces. 
like if you want to put an amount lah right? and then when it comes to to shoes also so daily shoes and then nice shoes and then sports shoes right and then you say slippers and then you say <laughs> like and so you need to actually like like ask yourself what are the activities that you do and what are the clothing that is specific to this activities because in our time there is a culture right, right? but we have specific uh, clothing and shoes for specific events and there, there is a there's a orf right there is the culture of the people right so of course in our time it, it's not you know appropriate to just have one pair of slippers and then you wear that one pair to the wedding you wear that one pair to to high raya i mean for for for, for visitations you wear the same thing over and over again you could then you could it's up to you you really could uh but then it is a culture lah. there's a culture that's there right to uh they say okay you know you know honor the host or no, whatsoever lah. they will see these kind of things right so okay lah, you have one nice pair for it and it's also of a sunnah of a sunnah of a sunnah but he did have like one nice uh thobe right that he would wear when he would uh when he would welcome delegations right because there is an orf right there is there is a culture right uh, a custom of the people that he's a leader or so some he's a leader so when people come as in the delegations they send off the, the best of their people right to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he used to have like a like a cloak that he would put on right just you know just to 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 honor the people who have come right? but it's not in the in the sense of uh, to show off right and he only had one Right, that he would, they would actually uh, wear. And so when you learn the Shama'il, you actually learn inside the ways of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like what he used to do, he used to, he used to also part his hair and he used to make it nice. And right, when you go and meet people, right? And Rasulullah Sallallahu and Sayyidina Khad, Sayyidina Aisha Sallallahu Alaihi saw him doing that, and she asked him, like, you know, oh, oh, you also do that. You also look at the mirror first and you just check if you, if you look okay. Right, and that is on the side of um, honoring uh, people, right? And that you don't go there looking very sticky, you know, or looking very. Uh, you know, not honoring them, but you should actually honor them, right? But then within the within the uh, boundaries of our religion, right? And there's some used to prohibit uh, the companions. Right? There were those who would go around looking very uh, dirty and disheveled and weak and whatsoever, and uh, on purpose. Not those who had no choice. Those who were actually on purpose having the kind of the kind of um, uh, disposition or the, 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 the kind of image right, they had, right? Um, and then he would actually say, no, the believer is someone of honor. Right, so you just not not excessive, right? But just enough for people to be able to honor you. And especially the ulama, especially in our time, will say that when people uh, see of someone who carries knowledge, that they should be of a certain dress, right? And then that it becomes compulsory on the knowledgeable to hold that particular um, dressing, right? So, like for example, if like, the habay or the mashayik, right, it's expected that they actually wear uh, the sarban. Right, so if you go see them walking around and not wearing it, right, you feel like you know it. I mean, it, it it does not. Only, it's not about them, but it's about the knowledge they carry. Right, like they need to honor the knowledge that they carry. Right, so as to help people accept it, right, from them. Uh, that's why they have to wear it just in, the, in a particular way. Yeah, the reda that they wear is a sunnah. Sunnah versus Allah Alaihi Wasallam. Right, but all these things, all it says, it brings, it brings. In the reverence or the, the honor of knowledge, right? uh, and, and it's not for them to show off uh, themselves. But if you can imagine, like for example, if you see them walking around like, in a t-shirt and track pants, you know whatever, like you you would, then straight away there is this um, like it, it does not help you right, as a student right, to actually take from these people. Right? It's like it's all all the hikmah from Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you see them uh, addressing that way. Right, so, so, so specifically, so it has to be, so in a sense, you can own things, right, but not in excess. Right? So you need to actually know how much you actually need and try to minimize thereafter right, from there. Right, so he says here, Al-Qism al-Thalisu an ya'khuza min al-halali fi hal al-udhri qadaran. يستعين به على عبادة الله تعالى ويقتصر على ذلك فذلك منه خير وحسنة وأدب فلا حساب عليه ولا عقاب بل يستوجب بل يستوجب عليه الأجر والمدح لقول تعالى أولئك لهم نصيب مما كسبوا Right, so that the third 
uh, group is the one who takes the halal uh, in a situation of like he has a reason an excuse why he's taking it and he takes it uh, only enough for what he needs and right, amount what he needs right uh, where uh, where he uses it specifically to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And he only uses the halal for worship, only, and not for anything else. And that is uh, good for him, right? and that is uh, beneficial for him, and that is the correct etiquette. Right? So therefore, there is no questioning onto him, and there is no punishment uh, against him. Rather, that it is something that, uh, would bring him to praise and to and to reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah says, and these are the people for them, they have a nasheeb. They have a portion of what they used to earn. وَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ طَلَبَ الدُّنْيَا حَلَالًا اسْتِعْفَافًا عَنِ الْمَسْأَلَةِ وَتَعَطُّفًا عَلَى جَارِهِ وَسَعْيًا عَلَىٰ عِيَالِهِ جَاءَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَوَجْهُ خُوقَ الْقَمَرِ لَيْلَةَ الْبَدْرِ وَذَلِكَ لَمَّا قَصَدَ بِهِ هَذِهِ الْقُسُودَ الْمَحْمُودَ لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ فَهَذِهِ هَذِهِ فَعَلَمْهَا right, So he says here, and some says in the hadith, that whosoever seeks of this dunya, it means they're going out and you're, and you're, and you're, and you're walking, and inshallah may Allah place us among, you know, in this group, Whereby you know when you read all these uh, stories of the of the ulama and the righteous, where they they hardly work, you know, in a sense they only work enough, right, just to support themselves in their family, right, and and they, they spend the rest of the time doing uh, worship, right, whereas those who work more, right, they should have the intention, right, to actually fall under this hadith where Rasulullah says, whoever seeks of this dunya that is halal, and right, that is the first condition, it has to be halal, right, and uh, isti'afafan. عن عن المسألة and the reason why they do so the first reason the first possible reason is so, so as to make themselves uh, free of having to beg uh, so they, they they seek this dunya because they don't want to actually beg other people or lean on other people for wealth that's the first reason second possible reason uh على جاره and also maybe to help out his neighbors right there are those who strive in this world and they work hard right so they are able to help their neighbors and to help other Muslims. وَسَعْيًا عَلَىٰ عِيَالِهِ And that he strives uh, for the sake of his children right, so that they can be uh, supported well and they can grow up well. Then they will come, or sometimes they come on day of judgment where his face will be like the full moon. And it is something that is highly, rec- highly appraised and highly rewarded. Right, if someone does work for this uh, reason. So that's why he's saying, you know, going more than what you need. Because what you need, you know, it does not actually cover uh, your neighbor, right, uh, other people. Right? So you go more than what you need because you want to use that wealth to support other people. Right? So you want to support uh, those who are studying, you want to support those who are uh, building uh, moths, you know, or wells or whatsoever. So you, you, you gain all this, you know, money you know in excess and alhamdulillah you know allah subhanahu has given us uh, a life in singapore whereby you can have money in your hand right and you uh, spend it in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so it says so this and this is how it, what it is to so understand this matter right any questions about that part we come to the end of the truth um, i know a lot of ladies that support their parents mm. yeah so how that is there is a very high it's a very high um, ibadah. It's a very high form of worship to so work. Number three, yes, number three. Right. It's a very high form of worship. Right. If someone goes uh, goes out, of course, with the permission of your husband. I right. know, of course. That's why it says halalan. Right. Uh, it has to be all okay by the rules of the religion. Right. And then, uh, and they do it not because they want to buy more stuff for themselves, but because they actually want, like for example, they want to send their parents to go to Umrah. Right, they want to do this, they want to do that. They want to do all kinds of righteous things. Right, then the, the reward is, mashallah, it's a really high reward. Right, and even um, if a woman were to help her husband with expenses, when it's not compulsory on her, but she, but she, her husband allows her to, right, there is no neglect in any way. Right, and, she does do, and she does that and then she helps him out with, with his finances, then she gets uh, two rewards. The reward of, um, of, of, of helping your own family, your own husband, and you get the reward of uh, giving sedekah. Right? Because it is sedekah because it's not compulsory on her to do so.
Right, this, this is one of the hadith by the wife of Sayyidina Mas'ud. Right, Sayyidina, Sayyidina, sorry, Sayyidina uh, Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Right, Ibn Mas'ud. Right, Sayyidina, when he was Sayyidina, she came up to Rasulullah and said, Ya Rasulullah, because prior to that, or some said to the woman, or oh, woman, give out from your wealth, right? Give out from the, uh, from the jewelry or the, from, from the jewelry that you have. Give it out, right? Because this is a way whereby you protect yourselves from the hellfire. So she, so the woman went home and they began to look into their jewelry to, to give out their jewelry. And then she came back to the house of Rasulullah and said, You know, Ya Rasulullah, uh, Ibn Mas'ud, no, my, my husband, says that uh, uh, that it is best that I give, if I'm going to give up my wealth, that I give it to him. Because he's a very poor man. And my husband's a very poor man. Uh, is he correct? <laughs> like, they feel weird that if I want to give out in charity, why should I give my husband? You know, so weird you know, give, to give my husband. He's supposed to support me. Right, but if your husband happens to be a poor man, <laughs> right, and, and he's he's poor in a sense that he's really struggling, you know, he's working really struggling, and, and they're poor people, right? You know, should you give it to him or should I give it to someone else? So she asked Rasulullah the question, and Rasulullah says that even Masud is right, and even Masud was known for his high knowledge, you know, in Islam. And mashallah, when you look at the Sahaba, you see a lot of them having very very high knowledge uh, in 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 jurisprudence, in the Quran, in Islam, right? But they are of the poorest of Sahaba. Right, because they will, uh, they will find all other means to earn their money, right, and not through the religion, <laughs> right, not through it. You know, they don't make themselves rich, right, in the sense that, right. But they will, they will find other ways, you know, of earning their money. There are Sahaba, you know. So for us, mashallah, we try, we try our best, you know, to try also have other forms of income, you know, uh, uh, and not try to. And Allah alam, you know, and and they are, these are all things that are permissible, right, in Islam for people to do, right. So. It all goes back to the intention. It all goes back to the intention. Right? What, like, in a sense, also, like, when, when they go and work and everything, then uh, it has, so, so the word halal here is very important. Like, halal, and, right? Meaning that it has to be uh, something that is praiseworthy. Like, what they are doing, that's the first thing, right? What they're doing is praiseworthy. Uh, and then their worship has to be also um, guarded over, right? So not at the expense of, so you might, might, might want to phrase it as, like at the expense of something else, at the expense of, um, of, of nurturing of children, at the expense of uh, looking after the household, at the expense of, if it's not at the expense of it, that means there is there are care there are nurturers around and there are there's a support system going on, then it's not at the expense of it. Right? So it really really so in a sense it's not a one off answer, right? But it really depends on a person's situation. Right? Whether or not they have a support system or they don't have a support system and whether or not like, what they're doing is it really um uh like, like you know like you know, why are they doing what they're doing? Right, so and, and the one is for everyone to, to answer for themselves, right? And to uh, and they're only judges Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. So you can't there's no yes or no answer, right, to it. Right? But it really goes down to the priorities that's there and the responsibilities that's in a person's life. Every individual have different responsibilities right, in the situation. Right? Basically the woman of uh, uh, the wife of Sayyidina Ibn Mas'ud, right, it was her jewelry that she was selling. Uh, to actually uh, to give out in charity and then you must say uh, it's better you give it to me because I'm a poor man right and then some some affirmed what he said and said yes it is better that you actually give to uh, your husband because he is a poor man inshallah yeah. <laughs> 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 وَحَسَنَةً كَمَا ذَكَرْتُمْ So then he says, so now, and, and this is basically uh, to answer your question also. He says, and when, if it's said, so what's the conditions? Right? What, is the, what are the conditions for something that is said? See, he thinks about everything. His mind was really, really, really in order. <laughs> like our minds are all over the place. <laughs> yeah, so you think about it, he's, he's like, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you're going to ask me this, you're going to ask me this, you're going to ask me this. <laughs> and he, he really troubleshoots the entire matter. 
So they go through his books, really, he combs out everything, you know, mashallah. But then, and this is a sign of intellect, like for us, for a person to be able to see a situation and analyze it and break it down into its, its components and then address it individually. Right? That is a form of very, very sharp uh, way of thinking, intellect. Right? And that's why some people, you know, when you, when you ask them questions sometimes, they don't answer the question, right? Because they're not able to comprehend what exactly you, you're asking, you know, or what you need. And so you're not able to actually go right to the point of the question. Right, so he says, so he says, what are the conditions of what is permissible so that it will become goodness and become uh, uh, beneficial for us is how you have mentioned. So he says, right, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ يَحْتَاجُ لِكَوْنِهِ خَيِّرًا فِي الْأَصْلِ إِلَى شَرَطَيْنِ right, فَأَحَدُهُمَا الْحَ- الْحَالُ وَالثَّانِي الْقَصْدُ right, So he says here, right, so no... Right, that it has to be good in it, in and of itself, right, first and foremost. It has to be a form of goodness in and of itself, right? Uh, and, and this one has two conditions, right, in the, in the states and in the intention of it. That means the very essence of it is, is, is good, right, and the very intention of it is also good. فَالْحَالُ يَجِبُ أَنْ يَكُونَ فِي حَالِ عُزْرٍ وَهُوَ بِحَيْسُ إِنْ لَمْ يَأْخُذْهُ يُؤْخَذْ نَفْسُ يُؤْخَذْ نَفْسُهُ وَتَفْسِيرُهُ أَنْ يَكُونَ حَالُهُ إِنْ لَمْ يَأْخُذْ ذَلِكَ الْمُبَاحَ يَنْقَطِعْ بِسَبَبِهِ عَنْ فَرْضٍ أَوْ سُنَّةٍ أَوْ نَفْلٍ فَيَكُونُ ذَلِكَ أَفْضَلَ أَفْضَلَ مِنْ تَرْكِ الْمُبَاحِ فَإِنَّ تَرَكَ مُبَاحِ الدُّنْيَا فَضِيلَةٌ وَإِذَا كَانَ الْحَالُ كَذَلِكَ فَهُوَ حَالُ الْعُزْرِ Right, so the first thing is that the state, you know, of a person in taking on this permissible methods. So he says here the state, right, and that it is compulsory that the state, right, it is in the state of uh, need, right, it's an, actual, it's an actual need for it, right, that's why you, you, are, you are going to it. Or there's a reason, you know, an excuse or a reason for it, Right, so in a in a sense whereby, uh, right, in in a sense whereby, right, if right, in a sense that if someone is, you know, if 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 he's not able to take this uh, permissible thing, right, he can in a sense, it will cause him. Right to be cut off from doing any form of uh, worship that is compulsory or sunnah or recommended, right? And then so it becomes uh, better that he takes this mubah uh, than that he leaves it, right? Meaning in taking this mubah, it allows you to do more goodness, right? That is, of course, from the wajib, right? From the uh, sunnah and then from the uh, recommended, right? So, so like for example, you know, that they work extra hours, for example, eh? Like earning more money so that they're able to go for Hajj, able to go for Umrah. Like it helps you do something that is uh, that is wajib or that is sunnah if you've done a few. Like or to, to, to work more, right, to get enough money so as to be able to go for classes, right, to travel here and there for classes, right, in a sense. Right, to be able to pay for all these things. Right, there is, you know, and, and, and so, this, so this situation, right, uh, it, it, it takes, you know, it, it pushes the person Right, to take a bit more from this dunya so as to be able to uh, support. Right, so and, and, and also like you were saying about the, about a, a parent, right? So a woman who has a mother, she wants to support. So she, she works a bit more. But then again, you must understand, right, not at the expense of anything else. Uh, so she's just allowed to actually go and do and work a bit more right, for her to be able to support her parents and right, to help, uh, help them out with the finances. Right, so here, uh, that's what he says, uh, so the, 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 the state of the person. Right. Uh, will taking on this mubah help you with your religious obligations and, and help you with uh, even the sunnah obligations right, in taking on this, uh, this, this halal. أَمَّا الْقَصْدُ فَأَنْ يَقَصُدَ أَبِهِ الْعُدَّةَ وَالْإِسْتِعَانَةَ عَلَى عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَهُوَ أَنْ يَذْكُرَ بِقَلْبِهِ أَنَّهُ لَوْ لَا مَا فِيهِ مِنَ التَّوَسُّلِ 
إلى عبادة الله تعالى لما أخذت ذلك فهذا فهذا ذكر الحج حجة فلما حصل ذكر الحجة في حال العذر صار ذلك الأخذ من الدنيا الحلال خيرا وحسنة وأدبا Right, so here he says, so as for your intention, right, so your intention in taking this, uh, it, this permissible thing, right, it has to be that you want to have it as, uh, as, as, as a preparation, right, or help for you in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, and to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and remember that in your, in your heart, uh, and he mentions in his heart, that if I don't, uh, if, if I don't take this, Right, it will it will uh, affect me in my worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It sounds a bit similar, right, but one is the, the state that you are in, and one is the uh, intention right, that you want in taking these things. Right, so Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so uh, so he says here. Right, so so and if someone does it this way, right, ensuring that the state of that that the state of which they take these halal things is uh, is necessary. Right, you know, and it's not in that not doing so will not stop them from doing acts of worship, right? And that his his whole point in doing this is because he wants to do an act of worship, right? So, so to answer the question of someone saying that you know you're sacrificing your career, right? For example, eh, like saying that you you know you could have climbed up the career ladder and become you know a very uh, big person in the company, right? So it, in a sense, like if if that to 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 speak about that. Right, is to say that you know, from what he's saying here, that what was the purpose in wanting to climb up the career ladder, right? For example, right? so so what is the purpose, right? If the purpose is because okay, there is more money with less time spent, for example, lah. But of course, then again, you say not at the expense of anything else, right? So not at the expense of your own religion, not at the expense of your own family, right? Of the responsibilities is on you. So of course, if the so so then he says in the, in in the the original ruling is that if the permissible that permi- that, that to take access to take access from the permissible itself, the original ruling is that it's blameworthy to take access of the permissible. Right? But you're allowed to do so right, if you see that if you don't take this access of the permissible, it will prevent you from doing your own acts of worship and your acts of sunnah. Right? It will prevent you. We mentioned it's now about the example of going for Hajj and Umrah. So if you don't actually work harder. Right, maybe you might not be able to go for Hajj or for Umrah or to support, you know, uh, your family or your parents who have to go, to go there. Right, so you can go and work harder to get more. Right, or in that, uh, in in seeking the excess of this dunya, right, that you want to use it specifically to help you in your worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, that is a specific specific intention, like Muhammad is saying about the qasid. Like, why are you doing this? Right, so if it's a matter of just wanting to be higher and higher in the ladder, you know, in, in your career or whatever reason lah. So it's so it, it, he he brings it back to it. It does boil down to the person's, uh, to the person's reasons, uh, your intentions. It goes back down to your intentions. Why are you doing what you're doing? Like and all, and all, and even if the intention, if the intentions are good, uh, it has to also be with the condition that nothing is being neglected. Uh, in you pursuing this extra of the halal, uh, nothing is being neglected. Right, so there is a there is, there is a need lah. Basically, there is a very strong need that you need to do this. So that's why he says in conclusion, وَأَمَّا لَوْ كَانَ حَالُهُ حَالَ الْعُزْرِ وَلَا يَكُونُ لَهُ هَذَا الْقَصْدُ وَالذِّكْرُ أَوْ يَكُونُ لَهُ أَوْ يَكُونُ لَهُ هَذَا الْقَصْدُ وَالذِّكْرُ وَلَا يَكُونُ فِي حَالِ الْعُزْرِ فَلَا يَصِيرُ ذَلِكَ الْأَخْذُ مِنْ مِنْ جُمْلَةِ الْخَيْرَاتِ Right, so if someone, you know, uh, like like has for 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 him right they have this uh this situation of you know having the other right having this excuse or having this re- this, this 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 reason of having to take from the permissible right but he does not have the um the intentions right, of of making it into a form of worship or if someone has the intentions but does not have the 
that uh, that's why he, the excuse or, or the reason why he has to do it so because it's preventing him from doing worship, right, then this will cause the person, uh, this is acts of obedience, not to be among uh, forms of goodness right, for this person because he's lacking right, in that the situation itself has to be goodness and also uh, the intention behind it has to be goodness. So if any one of these is, is lacking, then it's not a form of goodness. Right? So if someone has good intentions to, to, to earn money, right, to do uh, good things, Right, but the situation itself is not, it's not, it's not a good situation. Right, or not a good job, nor is or, it, or this person is neglectful of what's going on at home. Right, then uh, it's not a, it's not something that is recommended. No, uh, not not of goodness. Right, on the other hand, if someone is doing something that is of goodness, but they're not intending uh, with it to do uh, to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, then it does not fall into it as well. I see one says it has to be both. Eh? So the whole thing itself has to be uh, goodness. The whole act has to be goodness. The action, the, the, the way of, of seeking the permissible has to be, has to be permissible. Uh, has to be good. Right? And also that your intention right, of using the extra p- of the permissible has to be a good intention. Right. Alhamdulillah. Right. Uh, then he speaks about uh, the adab right? that, that is uh, necessary for a person in going to seek all these halal things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are there any questions first? Did you finish this entire part? ثُمَّ اسْتِقَامَتُ عَلَى حِفْزِ هَذَا الْأَدَبِ تَحْتَاجُ إِلَى بَصِيرَةٍ وَقَصْدٍ مُجْمَلٍ بِأَنَّهُ لَا يَأْخُذُ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا بِحَالٍ إلا للعدة على عبادة الله تعالى حتى إنه إن سهى عن ذكر الحا عن ذكر له حج حجة في حال أجزأه ذلك القصد المجمل عن تجديد ذكر الحجة قال شيخنا رحمه الله تعالى فصارت الأمور ثلاثة معتبرة فيه كل واحد من وجه يعني أن الذكر والحال متعبران في حصول كونه خيرا أصلا والقصد, والقصد المجمل مقتضي عن بصيرة منزلة الأدب معتبر في الاستقامة عليه ففهم ذلك راشدا right, so, he says, so he says here right, so then to, to have istiqama so after someone so for example someone goes out and work right, they go out and they pursue, they, they pursue what is halal right, as they are doing it then your, your intentions can change or even the situation by which you are seeking your halal the job itself or the requirements might change. Right? So, if there's an istiqamah that is required, right? that, uh, that, that you got over what is the adab right? and what are the permissible things that are, uh, that are there, right? that you came out initially with. Because all of these things, when it comes to work especially, right, uh, things change. So, the moment you see that it's longer falling under the permissible, right? or you see that your intentions have changed, Right, especially you know when people begin to uh, get wealth and they begin to enjoy luxury and they begin to enjoy name or or praises or whatsoever, right? All of these things will cause a person to change, so that requires uh, an an insight, right? So to be able to, to to observe what's going on around you, that the moment it begins to go into what is not uh, what is not pleasing to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right, for you to question yourself, right? Why you are you know, taking part in this excessive uh, um, forms of gaining the halal. Right, so I hope you are following. Eh? <laughs> if, there's, if you're not following, tell me, okay, that I, will, I will repeat that part. Right, so, uh, uh, so, so in, his, in his purpose, in, in seeking this, uh, this dunya, right, uh, in a situation whereby, so if he finds out that he, when he is seeking this dunya, at first he goes out to seek the money to prepare for his hereafter and to help other people prepare for the hereafter, or he's seeking the money because he knows that he's not seeking it, right, it, will, um, it will affect his ability right, to do what is sunnah or what is wajib, even what is recommended. Right? So if he finds that his seeking of dunya has now turned 
into that the halal that he's taking is not being used to help him worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's being used for something else. Like, or he finds that uh, he begins to forget right, why he is uh, going out in the first place right, to seek all this wealth. Right, then, uh, then, then what has happened to him is that uh, he needs to remind himself right, over and over again every day right, why is he going out doing this extra uh, work right, to get all this extra income. Right? So, so in a sense, oh, the moment he fear, he finds that it is going away. Right? This, this, and Shatna will make a person forget right? his intentions is why he's doing work. And right? he needs to remind himself. And it also shows in how they use their wealth. Uh, so the wealth is being used for things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes. Right? Or the wealth is being used for, you know, for again, as mentioned just now, lahu and lahu, right? about, uh, about folly and about um, vanity. Right, about about empty speech, right? Then he needs to question why is he seeking all this extra wealth that's out there. So so in our time, it is something that is very prevalent, right? when people go out and they work, right? And they use this money, uh, not for worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? But they're using the money for all as all forms of enjoyment, right? In this world that you know it, either it is macro. Or it is haram in itself. Right? So in spending their money and they, sp- they buy all this, you know, all this Netflix and whatsoever, right? I mean, spend money and they do a subscription and they pay for it, right? And then, like, in a sense, you see the, 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 the wealth that Allah has given them. And in a sense, they spend time getting this wealth that is not necessary, right? But they're using it instead to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why this book is a very, it's a very, um, it's, it's very blank. Uh, it's very blank right, about it. Right, why? It makes people think. Right, why are they doing what they're doing? And, and don't just keep thinking, you know, but it's not haram. What? It's not haram. What? And then my mother will make you question, is it really not haram? Right, or is it haram? Right, you're, you're going to question yourself. Right, as to because you're, you're going out, instead of spending time worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, going out to work. Right, and then you're going out to work, why? Right, what is the whole point in doing all this uh, work that is out there? Right, so, so for every person to, to gauge the matter and to judge for themselves, right, what are they doing? And is it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it good in its essence? Right, and is it good in its intentions? Right? These are basically the two things that he's speaking about at this point. Right, and it's our Sheikh has said that the, the, the matter is, uh, has, has, has come into three things right, that a person should be, uh, should be mindful of. Right, uh, and each of them has has their own uh, specifications for it, right? And that for, and that if a person needs to remember, right? And uh, so that to remember your 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 intentions and to have uh and to have the the act itself an act of uh, of goodness, right? They will bring you. It, it makes the uh, the deed itself in its basis. Goodness, right? So your to remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in doing it, right? And also it, the, the the very act itself is halal, is permissible, right? Whereas uh, your intentions in doing it, right? It makes it, it is it is it holds the position of an adab, right? adab of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the etiquette, right? So that you it will it will it will force you, right? To to have istiqamah on this. And also force you to have istiqamah in how you use the permissible uh, fruits right, from this action. I mean, the, the money that you get from this action. Right? So, so, so understand this right, in goodness and in uprightness. Right. And the next question he asks, For in qila, فَإِنْ أَخَذَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا الْحَلَالَ لِشَهْوَةٍ فَهَلْ يَكُونُ ذَلِكَ مَعْصِيَةً uh, And then وَهَلْ يَلْزِمُهُ عَلَيْهِ عَذَابٌ وَهَلْ الْأَخَذُ بِالْعُزَرِ فَرْضٌ أَمْ لَا Right, so the next question that he asks here is that And if someone takes of this dunya what is halal but because of desire like, Is it really a sin? Right, to take of the halal but desires of the halal right, is it really a sin right will he really be punished uh, must he really have a good reason why he's taking of the halal of this dunya 
um, and this reason has to be a very sound reason in religion, or can you just keep taking from the halal? And it's something that it is liked. You know, to ask the question, right? And he says that. And his fa'alam anna zalika fadilatun wa nusammihi khayran wa hasanatan wal amru bihi amru ta'deebin wal akhadu bi shahwati sharrun wa sayyiatun wal nahyu anhu nahyu zajrin wa adabin wa laysa zalika bi ma'asiyatin wa la yakunu alayhi azabun nari wa innama alayhi al habsu well, hisabu, well, laumu, wata'yiru. So, Mughazai says, well, it's not to say that it's sinful, right? It's not to say that it's sinful, but it is, it is you know, that when we, when we command all of you to do this, you know, when we advise you to do this, right, it's more of, it's more of uh, that it's better for you, right, not to take anything because of shahwa. Right? So, if someone goes into a job and goes, in, you know, into extra hours of the job, right, and they really want to have a higher position, or they really want to have, you know, more money for luxury. So someone, so someone is asking, is it really that bad? Like you can't do that also. Then he says, well, it's not that it is a sin, right? But it is from etiquette, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, that you don't do it that way. That if you're going to spend your time doing something, then make it count for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's, all, that's all that he's saying, right? So it is a, a warning. It's an adab, it's an etiquette. Right? It's not a ma'asya. Right? And there is no punishment in the hellfire for this person. But what it is, is that you will be subject to being questioned under your judgment. Right? And you can be blamed and you can be uh, humiliated. But, you know, to say whether it's a sin or not, right, it's not a sin because it's not haram. Right? But uh, he says that it is really uh, it is unbecoming of the believer to spend his time and his energy and his effort doing things that does not benefit him nor... Is it on the path of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right. Then he has a few more questions whereby he addresses, right? Whereby he says, you know, فَمَا هَذَا الْحَبْسُ وَالْحِسَابُ الَّذِي يَلْزِمُ الْعَبْدَ What is this, you know, habs? What is this trapping or questioning that a servant is, will undergo? And the next question he asks, you know, فَإِنْ قِيلَ فَاللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ قَدْ أَحَلَّ لَنَا هَذَا الْحَلَالِ فَاللَّوْمُ وَتَعْيِيرُ فِي أَخْذِهِ لِمَاذَا right? And it says, then, why is there any blame and any, um, you know, censure right, on a person who takes his halal that Allah has a love for us to take his halal? Uh, so he actually goes into the arguments. Right? Someone says, why do you say there's blame in making more of the halal? Right? Allah himself made it halal. You know, so why do you say there's blame? I say, why do you say that he's being, he's being um, held behind? Why do you say there's a lot of questions? Uh, it's all halal, right? So it should be okay to take it. So inshallah, next week I will go through that part whereby he answers the questions uh, of these two things. And then he leaves, he ends the chapter. And then he, is doing a, he will do a, a final summary of this chapter before going to the next hurdle, uh, which is the fourth hurdle uh, after this. Any questions about this? Masha'Allah. Mm-hmm. Any questions? Mm-hmm. So basically, now in, in wanting to seek what is uh, halal right, and more of, and, and to seek more of the halal, and so it's on us to check: right, is the very action itself halal? Right, is it permissible? Is it good? Is it, is, are you doing goodness in that act itself? Uh, is there goodness in that act? And then your intentions. What are you going to use it for? Uh, so the money, what is it, what is it meant to do? Uh, so that, that you know, mashallah. La. <laughs> so everybody will be their own judge. And Allah is our final judge. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, that's why that the question came about. Yeah. Thing so that you, people you fall into. Yeah, and then you do it for luxury, holiday, whatever. Yeah. Then you still access. Yeah, to spread shahwa. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that's why the, the question came about you know, is it really sinful <laughs> like what if I mix the two ah, that kind of thing like, so I use it for ibadah and then I also use it to do other things you know but not, not sin is it not sin but you know I buy stuff you know here and there right, so that's why the question came about is it really hal- really a blameworthy or what do you say ah, so Mughal says well you know right, it will bring about questioning uh, but to say that, that it has punishment on it, he can't say that. Uh, so in a sense, he's still pushing people towards. He's pulling. He's pushing people towards having higher states of, you know, uh, dedication to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So that's why it goes by percentage. So first, the person's whole life is not maybe hundred percent. It's not dedicated to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and they begin to pray five times a day. So maybe five percent now goes to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and they begin to do more zikr. 10% goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They begin to have their work only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? If it's not only, then maybe okay, 50% right now. So as you move through this life, that's what the book is about. As you reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your whole life needs to be 100% for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're moving slowly uh, with the percentage that you are taking or that you're changing your life uh, to be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why it says, you know, if you want to say, can we do it? Yes, you can. But it's still a percentage that you're putting aside that's for yourself. Right? So in your journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you begin to put aside more and more percentages right, of your 24 hours for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's basically what it is. Lah, right? So it's going towards there. So it's not to make things hard, right, but it's just to make this, this, this dunya we life uh, real right, to us. <laughs> Hope that is clear. Inshallah, we'll stop here for today. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحه ان الله يجزي عمنا في عن وعمل خالد وعمر الثاني ودلاله على الخدا ويسر بقوم النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ورحم علينا ومشايخنا وزوجنا علينا والى حضن النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحه